Lads, I've got an important announcement to make. Father's Day is coming up, and I've got the easiest gift you're ever going to need, and the one that's actually going to look after your dad and your mum. Why? Well, let me explain. We've all been in the gym showers, we've all been in the locker rooms, we've all seen older men who've just let themselves go. What are you playing at? Just looking like a jungle. Do you know what I mean? They don't care. The romance is dead. Well, you need to sort that out because your mother is the one who's got to look at it. Think about that. You want it to be as clean and as appetizing as humanly possible. And that's where Manscaped come in. This will help save your parents' relationship. I know we don't like to think about it, but your mom and dad do have sex. The least you can do, since you benefited from it with your life, is actually make sure they're having good sex. The Lawnmower 4.0, it works like a dream. The trimmer has a ceramic blade designed to cut hair on loose skin and reduce grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin safe technology. And let's not forget when your mother has to give them a kiss because sometimes their nose hairs are out of control. That's why we've got this beauty, the Manscaped Weed Whacker. I've never felt anything like it. It does the job so quickly. It's like a massage for your nostrils. The box also comes with a lovely pair of boxer shorts to help you breathe whenever you're doing any strenuous exercises. Shampoos, fantastic. And a cracking bit of cream to pop on your balls so that you're smelling fresh before the night out. So lads, this Father's Day, don't just think about yourself. Think about your mother as well and all the sex they'll be having. I just thought about it. So go to manscaped.com and use my code TRUE, that's T-R-U-E, at checkout for 20% off and free shipping. And if this advert doesn't get you lot clicking, then you can fuck off. You know what to do. All right. Well done. I'm proud of you. Enjoy the video. Welcome back to the Pain Game YouTube channel and today I'm talking about Conor McGregor. Now, I've never made a video like this before and it's not really the kind of video I want to make, but I think it's necessary because someone has to say it. Conor McGregor, I think, has a problem. Now, I don't know the ins and outs of what that problem is, but the way he's speaking is worrying. This isn't me making jabs or trying to take the piss. It, I genuinely feel bad for this man right now because if there's one thing about Conor McGregor that we've always known him to be, is a fantastic speaker. I'll give you an example. I want to do what's right and just and do my part. That's it. I think, you know, it's, it's our, our duty as humans to give back. Okay, so you get the point. McGregor is a very well-spoken guy. We all know this. And he's articulate, chooses his words well, paces his sentence as well. Just generally one of the best speakers in sport. Now, let's go to a series of interviews he gave on the same day last weekend uh, for the Katie Taylor fight in Ireland. Potentially before. It's all, yeah, it's stolen. It's stolen. The, the calls were made. The, the processes, oh, yeah. the processes, the process, and... The, the difficulty that Conor McGregor has in, in even just finishing a sentence here is very bizarre. Is the point happening this year? So there's a constant licking of the lips throughout all of these interviews, and he can't keep his attention on Ariel Helwani for two seconds. Backing him, it seems like, in this fight, he's yeah. showing love to you. Yeah. Again, with the strange mouth movements constantly, his mouth can't stop going here. Ah, uh, we're about, you know, yes, yeah, it's competitive. What was that one? Ah, uh, we're about, you know, yes, yeah, it's competitive. The guy is not making any fucking sense here. Freaking against them. Does that surprise you? Again, with the constant licking of the mouth. So I'm not going to drink it. This will be I'm not going to drink Because I'm going to train three times today. And I tell you why. When I trained this morning, I don't usually train three times. I just feel like three times a day. I'm a little man. I don't. It's just a big fight. The guy. I'm laughing, but I'm not, it's not funny, really. I, you know, the guy's just said, I'm not drinking today. How the fuck is he acting like this? Do you know what I'm saying? For a start, I was hoping he was drunk. It's like torturing me, because this point's seeing you now. This is torturing me. I'm not gonna drink it. I'm not gonna drink it. It's obvious, I'm not gonna drink it. I'm not gonna drink it. Because I'm gonna train three times today. Because I'm gonna train three times today. And I'll tell you why. Right? And I'll tell you for why. I trained this morning. I trained this morning. I don't usually train three times. I don't usually train three times a day. I just feel like three times a day. I just feel like three times a day. I'm a little... I'm a I little... This is a big fight tomorrow for Katie. This is a big fight tomorrow for Katie Taylor. Maybe a nice... Sam AD, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I just I, I love her so much and I'm, I'm so invested in her and I want to see her do well. I'm on, I wanted both ladies and all the competitors. You can see poor Ariel. Ariel did a great job on this broadcast, by the way. He must be looking in this man's eyes thinking, you are fucking wrecked, mate. What is going on here? Uh, look how glorious that is. It's sitting there a minute now, sitting there about 10 minutes now, so the energizing, but glorious. I'll have a coffee instead. And enjoy. <laughs> 
Just like, just getting a word in with this geezer. You deserve a medal, Ariel. The mayor gives me this coffee, it was called a cafecito, it's Cuban coffee. It's unbelievable, but you're, you're, you're running around doing laps. The cafecitos, mate, you need to leave them alone if this is what they're doing to you. It's unbelievable, but you, you're... What does that mean, right? But you, you're, you're running around. The Cuban beans brought them back with the machine, how to make it. And then we got cafecito coffee here in the back row. Literally, Ariel Hawani, two, two minutes plus in. He hasn't had a word. And they are I'm well traveled. You're well fucking something. I don't know what, mate. So Ariel asks Connor, about the documentary and what he thought of it. Oh, I didn't have creative control of it, so I wasn't. Really? No, no, I wasn't. I'm the creator. I, I'm the creator. I'm the creator, right? so I wasn't just oh. saying happy if it. I, I love the story, and you know, the way it's, I wouldn't change it for I, was, I would add my magic. Another clip that probably does justice what I'm feeling right now. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? <laughs> Let's track this back. No, no, I don't. I'm the creator. I, I'm the creator. I'm the creator. Right? So I wasn't just saying happy. Literally, that that really that face right there really sums up Conor McGregor right now. I don't know if this is related to his bad leg break or if this is just a slow descent into more and more drug use because you know let's be real the more you take it the more you need and the reality is he's he's a far cry from the guy who gave this interview sure you know it's it's good to be in this position i'm very thankful for it i'm very you know i'll make sure to, to put it to full use it's not even recognizable to this 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 brilliant speaker of a man it's not even recognizable man it's it's actually sad, man. It, re it genuinely is. Like I, we've seen twisted geniuses before. Um, Paul Gascoigne, for example, uh, the footballer. Some of you might not know who he is, but he was a genius footballer who unfortunately had issues with addiction. When you're going on to interviews with DAZN and the like, and you're making a tit out of yourself, that's when those close to you need to step in and say, enough's enough for me. What the fuck are you doing? Who's his friends? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I'm happy with the old... The this is a young lad who we watched fucking be the best speaker we've ever seen in MMA, and he's just... There needs an intervention here. No, me, can't wait. Oh, 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 I love Kyoshi. I might have said, all right? With that Artem and all the rest, well, just like, oh, this, I'm doing me a focus on my family, my team. I don't expect to put your hand down my face. You know, like you, help, you help someone, right? You help someone. Or bring, it's important to help someone. It's important to help, right? Because we all start with zero. So it's important to help down. But if you help down and bring someone up and rise someone up, and then when they're there, they do, it's if the, the hand comes out again. And then, okay, for me, no problem. I'll do it again. I'll do it after a while, it's like, I can't keep doing this. You know, sometimes you look in someone's face and you see things. The guy doesn't look happy. Just feel sorry for him. He's telling the story about Artem Lobov, who was a friend of his who later sued him. And I think that that broke his heart a little bit, the way he's telling this story. So it's like, I've, I've helped and I've done my bit. And it's at times, and a few fucking times, come back to buy me. Yeah, I feel you on that one, mate. <laughs> Connor later that day took uh, questions from the boxing media and these were posted on social media. They went viral for all the wrong reasons. All of the comments echoing uh, my concerns here. And uh, this was a question about whether or not he should fight Canelo Alvarez. And the way he just starts performing for no reason whatsoever in this interview is just bizarre. I don't, I don't, I like, I, I'm a southpaw, right? I was a southpaw. Billy Joe was a southpaw. Yeah. I've seen methods, I've seen things I do, and I know he's waning. I'll oh, fight Canelo, no fucking problem, yeah? That was great, no problem. Then we get a question about him and Carl Froch. <laughs> The fighters he's fighting against, they're not living like this. They they're taking shit seriously. And when you're off your face from get go, when you're waking up on a weekend, you're fucking not taking it seriously. You're not living the life. And this is after years of inactivity, after a major, like career ending arguably injury. 
And he is behaving like this on the run-up to another fight against a killer in Michael Chandler. If you've ever wanted to put all your money on, on, on a fighter... It's Michael Chandler right now because everything you're seeing from Conor McGregor is a guy who looks out of shape, he looks bloated, and that's coming from me, I know. Compared to Conor normally who's chiseled and diced, he doesn't look like he's taking this fight seriously at all. Some people might pick out, pick on what I'm saying here and, and act like I'm, um, you know, being harsh, he's just having a good time, he's just enjoying himself. Conor's always loved a good time, but I've never seen him this bad. We've seen athletes before who've gone down that road and when they're chasing the the thrill of the crowd and the adulation and no one enjoyed it more than Conor McGregor, it's an addiction. And when you can't have that addiction, you replace it with other addictions. Ricky Hatton has spoken about openly about it and I just don't want to see him go down that road where it's a dark place. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks to everyone who's been supporting all the content lately. And hopefully we see Conor McGregor clean his act up, get himself in a better place and be the best version of himself inside the cage. And if not, even outside the cage. We don't want to see him just rambling like a madman. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>